So uh, I'm Andrew Newman, I'm Principal Data Specialist at the Open Data Institute, and as part of that role I've been asked to pick up the chair of the W3C Working Group. Um, Howard is going to continue joining us here as our technical expert, um, so between us hopefully we can make these calls work quite well. Um, if you aren't already a member, uh, please join the W3C Community Group. Um, there's a link uh, on this slide, which will be in the deck when you receive them. And uh, you can also find it really easily on the Open Active website uh, or, or via Google. Um, today uh, on the agenda, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, mapping activities for, to, to facility types um, and kind of describing add-on facilities or services that are at a facility. So actually this is about how we uh, describe the places activities happen, essentially. Um, and at the end, uh, we want to have a discussion about future topics and how we prioritise them um, so, so that we can have a bit more of a plan about how we run these calls and the things that we do with these calls in the future. Um, so I think at that point, um, Howard, can I hand over to you to talk about the, the activities and facilities type problem? Is Howard still here? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, no, cool. Thank <clears throat> you, Howard. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do a great deal of talk today. I'm going to hand over to Steve, uh, if that's okay. But Andrew, that um, heading is a link. If so, it might help if you just want to click on that, and it'll bring we'll a do. slightly more relevant screen up. Um, but <clears throat> if it's okay, Steve, I can hand over to you because I can. I can barely speak today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this issue is to do with the activity uh, facility type activity mapping. Um, so the mapping um, already exists. Um, and this issue is more to define the exact nature of that uh, of that mapping. Um, and uh, what I would like to see is that they are um, strictly equivalent. So when going from a facility type to a mapping. Um, by this, I mean that a, a tennis court should map directly to tennis, but an indoor sports hall should not have any um, activities mapped to it because it is not strictly equivalent to uh, any activities as you can do lots of activities on that. Um, this is helpful because there are some um, facility providers that exist currently that provide that give you an activity um, but not a facility type um, I think they're predominantly legend and gladstone booking systems at the moment um, so, uh, may, sorry? just legend oh just legend um, yeah um, so lots of our um, implementers are using the facility type query parameter um, and so we need to do that mapping in order to surface the, the facility uses. Um, and the, the second use for this is if um, there is a use case where somebody was booking a, a tennis court and you also wanted to suggest some tennis lessons to them, it, it's useful to know what the tennis court, what, activity, what session activities these would, a facility type would map to. Um, so yeah, it's it's about the nature of the uh, of the mapping and how they should be st strictly equivalent. Um, the the PR that I've raised addresses uh, some of these non equivalences. Um, so I think the dr drama studio mapped to dance, um, and what I've done there, I think I've removed drama studio because or I've removed dance, sorry, from that mapping, because you can do multiple things in a drama studio. Um, I've changed the cricket net mapping to the activity cricket nets instead of the activity cricket, uh, and a few more. Um, yeah, that's that. Does anyone have any questions? Or anything else? Are you setting this up so it's a two-way mapping? So, or is it just kind of like a like a tree structure? Um, I don't 
think it's a two-way mapping because um, in most cases you can do activities in multiple facility types. So, for example, if you wanted to do tennis, there could be an indoor tennis court or an outdoor tennis court or know, some, something else. Um, whereas, so you, you can't, yeah, if you've got a, something that has a, a mapping of tennis, you can't necessarily say that it has to be in a tennis court. But the other way mapping, the facility type to activity mapping is the, is, what I think this mapping deals with. Right. Sorry, this is Anderson. I'm not quite sure I'm following. I might have been just a little bit dim here. So, what are we saying is the current functionality? And what is it we're looking to change it to? And this is so a generic thing have... that's come from a specific customer uh, or a provide operator, or is, is this generic rolled out across all operators and all software providers? Yes, I can, I can help with this, Andy, from um, a, a grad, grad stone perspective, maybe. That, that well, not just grad stone, but generically, you know, what, what's the message? Right. So, um, I think last year or the year before, some time ago, the videos are on the uh, channel, um, there was a long discussion about a facility type um, being used instead of activity for facilities. Um, and the, um, the reason for that was that there was... Uh, Earlier on in the evolution of open active, there was this idea that you could label facilities with a activity type, and that would be the most useful way of doing it. So this, for example, instead of labeling a football pitch as a football pitch, you would label it as football. Instead of labeling um, a tennis court as a tennis court, you'd label it as tennis. Um, that worked in a very limited sense for some of the data and some of the use cases, but when expanded out to broader use cases, especially around schools, it quickly became obvious that we can't, it's it's more complicated than that when you go outside the basic football, tennis, netball, et cetera, because you get into drama studios and um, classrooms and uh, dance studios and multi-use games areas and a whole bunch of other things. Um, and those spaces need to be called a multi-use games area or a drama studio or a dance studio rather than trying to make them into a tennis court or sorry, trying to say what sport happens. So, yeah, it's, the same, so it's the same thing as a sports hall. A sports hall is multi-use. So it might be badminton, it might be netball, it might be basketball. Exactly that, that's right. And with um, with a, a everyone active um, example, um, everyone active sell uh, access to a badminton court for a, for a fee within the sports hall. So the product you're purchasing is badminton court you know, one. That would be, be the same for anyway. that would be the same for each, any leisure operator, not necessarily everyone active. So it would be the same for Sorry, GLL yeah. and so on. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, absolutely. Whereas, with, and, and sometimes in a school, you can just have the whole sports hall as the thing that you're purchasing. So you mm -hmm. can actually have you know book the sports hall, and that would be a facility type. So and and that that led to the conversation about we should probably have facility types as a thing in, instead of activity. So rather than trying to label everything with the activities that could happen in there, because when you've got a sports hall and a multi-use games area, it's like 15 different activities, which isn't helpful for searching or for the end user, because the end user is actually just looking for a sports hall or looking for multi-use games area in their search experience. So help them find the thing they're looking for. Um, therefore, we want to switch the label. So uh, the conclusion was switch the labels to facilities, um, sorry, facility types, facility types, um, is something that has been implemented by everyone who's publishing facility data, um, except for Legend, um, because their implementation predates that. Um, and Gladstone, luckily, um, includes both. So Gladstone have implemented, um, OWS implements both activity and facility type against the uh, facility use uh, as options. So you could just not tag an activity in there and only tag a facility. Um, type and without any code change you'd be able to conform to the the new approach i suppose for facility uses does that help as a um yeah, and yeah. specifically with what this is addressed the old um functionality was slightly vague and didn't didn't uh, specify that uh, the the equivalence nature between facility type and activity um in in the mapping so um what i'm what i've suggested here is that if there is an activity on uh, um 
in the in the mapping against a facility type, it must be exactly equivalent. It must be tennis court to tennis. It can't be tennis court to indoor sports hall. So well, can I ask a, a, a question? So if you've got tennis court mapped to tennis, would that in any way prevent that tennis court being used to host, I don't know, badminton? Um, no, uh, no. Well, yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's the label. So if you imagine um, real, real use case, talk to the everyone active operator, sorry, to the active. Uh, just because Andy's on my screen uh, and uh, and doesn't even work for Urban Active. So, <laughs> um, so uh, legend, uh, if we talk about, um, let's say, a legend operator, uh, let's say, who is um, going to be, let's say, Jubilee Hall Trust, um, who've got to tag their activities in legends such that they can be useful for people that are using their data. So that operator, that, that um, person who's um, administering the system, will have a list of activities in front of them from the activity list, which is, you know, it's 500 something different activities. Um, and we want to be able to give them clear instruction to say, in order to be featured in the searches of, or the many searches that are around that use facility type, not activity now as their primary search function, you need to pick some stuff from this list in front of you that's gonna map across to what's in the list everyone else is using. And so basically there's 500 options, but here's a little cheat sheet of 30 that you can choose that will actually work in the new and the old world. Um, and that only works because there's an equivalence. So any of those 30 that are chosen, if you choose cricket nets, you'll know that the cricket nets is mapped to cricket nets um, facility, facility type so it's a one to one. Whereas at that moment, cricket nets is mapped to cricket. So if they chose cricket nets, it wouldn't actually label it correctly. Um, so it, it allows for that kind of cheat sheet to be provided and that that um temporary but possibly not temporary because you don't know when a legend's going to get around to doing that work so it might be a couple of years until you know that that need to use the cheat sheet for that type of activity is um uh, it expires um it's the interim fix if you like and it, it's about making sure that the interim fix works effectively because when this list was put together, that fix wasn't being, being used. I guess my question was about does does putting this fix in place break anything else and make anything out restrict anything else from being possible? I don't believe so because the uh, the this is a mapping that's within the list itself rather than on any any systems that are connected to it. Yeah, so okay. there's no work required for anyone else in the ecosystem. Just this just enables uh, users of data to um, map map the data such that it can be standardised across. So this would, so this will be a standardised list that will be offered via URL as such that they can actually just map to, rather than potentially adding as they want at a whim as such. So there's a list being standardised based on what will become the facility is. There's already a list of facility types. This is standardizing the mapping of what uh, activities map to facility types. So if you like in, in, in Legend, where you've got to choose from the 500 options, which of those are mapped to the, the new list? Can, so I'm just saying we have to do the same thing here as well. Hi, Debbie. Hi, yeah. Um, Debbie. I just don't know whether we've got something already in place that does this i don't know um it I, I need things in simple terms i apologize because throw it you guys a lot of you live and breathe this but we come in it once every two weeks and it, it's not as we're not as familiar with all the terminology that you just throw out there constantly so um but when i look at the open data manager from a gladstone perspective i've got a facility use which is golf simulator and the only facility type I can tick is driving range or golf course. So what are you saying would change about that behaviour? Well, actually, what we need to change in that case is making sure that golf simulators on the list of facility types, which isn't, <laughs> because that's a great example of a gap. 
okay. uh, which probably someone, if, if someone's searching for a golf simulator, you know, would um, want to be able yeah. to, to see that. But the fact that that activity has an activity reference of golf means that those are the only two facility types being given to me as an option currently. It, it, Howard here, can I just jump in? Uh, Debbie, yeah. is that those options are, are visible to you on your internal system? Is that right? Well, it's the Gladstone, yeah, open active yeah. Man okay. or the so, open data so manager, yeah. So at some point, either those are being drawn from a central list or there's a, you know, Gladstone have created a list. I think what, I, what I've put in the chat is the um, is a link to the the kind of centrally hosted um, list of facility types, which is the one that Nick has just suggested is is missing golf simulators, um, and <clears throat> under each concept, so there's sports hall, you know, a few lines down, and there are no mapped activities, <clears throat> um, and that's the point we're saying because a sports hall could be used for. For, for a great deal. Um, and then if you look at squash court, then it's linked to some specific activities. What we're saying is that um, those mappings have been reviewed um, and that there are some refinements to be made. Uh, I think I think that's, that's what we're trying to say at the minute. So at the minute, this facility types list exists. It's a little bit, um, it's not as clear and as visible as the activity list. We've talked quite a bit about the activity list over the last couple of um, calls. And um, I'd like to see the facility types list, um, you know, given the same kind of precedence and clarity around what it's there for and how it works. Uh, so we can keep things like up to date. If, if you've got new facility types that are on the list, we need a process to kind of keep it up to date. So <clears throat> I'll stop talking now before my voice goes, but that was a, I just wanted to say that. Okay, so if you're ultimately going to change that list, and Gladstone appear to have appear to be using that list, then what that means from our perspective is we would have to go in and update all the facility type selections against all the activities after the changes have been made. Is that right? Yeah, um, but there are very few changes that have been suggested. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's just four changes, maybe five changes, um, that okay. that are not quite equivalent. So, for example, um, squash court here is a good example. Um, links to fives. Um, so I've removed that because a fives court is different to a squash court, um, and I've moved um, squash. 57, which is the new name for racquetball, away from squash court and put it into racquetball court. Okay. So if, if a facility says that it is a, it, the activity that it provides is racquetball, then we can now map that to say, oh, this is a racquetball court, instead of saying, this is a squash court. Okay, so I think like from an operator's perspective, <laughs> I find it really difficult to, keep track of these changes. So when you make that change, how you tell us we've made that change so that when we can go and update all of our stuff, what's that process? Does it exist? I think that's what Howard was talking about. Yeah, the, the, part of this, uh, the, the previous conversations we had about the activity list is that there isn't a process at the moment um, for, well, there was a process for activity list stuff. It wasn't working that well. There's, there's been a suggestion, I think, in this forum of a new process for activity list stuff, which okay. is going to include a better communication around what's happening, more transparency, a clearer process. And and as Howard's just suggested there, that, that should include this list as well as the activity list. So it's a holistic approach. Oh, um, yeah, and, but there should and, be some I mean, notification. Both, I mean, both this, uh, both this data, facilities types data, and the activity lists are reference data. And actually, people who are using that reference data should be aware that it will change over time and have a process in place for adopting the changed data. And you, you may do that by actually linking to the, 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 the list itself and using that data from source. Or you might do that by having a process for taking a copy of the data on a regular basis and updating it. 
Um, yeah, I think that's a bit naive, if I'm honest. Sorry, just to say, like, we're not somebody... sitting here cross-referencing a, a, a list once every month to see if anything's changed. We need to be told if something changes so that we can take action against it. And where these facilities in here that are only associated to one facility type, then the management console, whichever it is, Gladstone or Legend or whatever, should by default just associate to that facility type to save the operator work. Because all we're doing with all these conversations is just pushing more work onto us to manage that data. And it does become really onus on us. Like, and then we're just told the data's rubbish. Well, that's because you changed something. You didn't tell us it was changing. So then we couldn't go back and update it because we haven't got time to sit and validate, oh, that list changed this month, so now we need to go and update everything. Yeah, we, I, I'd echo that, because if, if changes are coming in, then yes, if it's something that we need to do from a de development perspective, we obviously need to factor those features in. In this case, it doesn't look like it is. It's, it's an extension to what's being offered at this moment of time in the mapping, which is great. There's a communication between software operators, and we're obviously acting on behalf of everyone active, so if there's a change, it's probably better it comes from us. If not, it's in this instance here, it's a, a list that's been updated. So that could be fed to us or it could be a communication that goes out to all the operators. It, it depends what's being implemented. Yeah, I, I would I would agree, Andy. Stephen, you've been very patient. Yeah, just thanks, Andrew. Just wanted to come and just make a couple of comments about some of the comments that have been made already. I mean, Siv made an example about the racket. Um, racquetball um, uh, and I think as an, an operator I think everybody knows that you play racquetball on a squash court yeah. leisure centers and facilities that we run don't have racquetball courts they don't exist we have squash courts so in that example I mean maybe that was just a, a random example Siv that you gave but I, I we're not going to change our branding and marketing and then our signage just to say we've got racquetball courts so that we can signpost people who've actually gone via a different route to make a booking racquetball court because it just doesn't exist they're not there and then the, you've got another activity type uh, so another activity to take table tennis for example um which and I, I don't quite know how we've mapped ours to the facility type because you can do table tennis on any activity in any space squash court studio spin studio sports hall fireside football court you can do it anyway you can put a table tennis table anyway so we're not restricted by facility type as to where we do table tennis so i just wanted to throw those into the melting pot as considerations because um whilst i know that within the open play system the flow we've got facility type and we map all our activities our activity templates to a facility type um we don't want to be restricted necessarily by that um so i'm just calling that out just just as a consideration yeah, that, that's fair about the, the racquetball one. Um, I think that's probably the more contentious change, one of the more contentious changes that I've um, suggested, um, which probably on a, you know, thinking about it practically, um, I think you're right. The other changes I've suggested are much simpler, which are things that if you tag something with the activity, if you tag a facility with the activity cricket net, it, um, it maps to the facility type cricket net. Um, it's that sort of thing. Um, it, yeah. Sorry, Andy. Sorry. You're a bit quiet, Andy. Am I? Yeah. That's I haven't moved at all. Okay. Um, so, Steve, I mean, I, I hear you saying that these are suggestions and things, but what forum are these being floated around more so from the operator's perspective to get their buy-in? Is it viable? Does it work? Rather than not suggesting it's just a list that's compiled and we're going to throw it out there. How, how is this being managed and how is this research taking place to validate the list? So, so th this mapping already exists and it is being used by everyone. I understand the mapping is existing, but where you're yeah. saying you're proposing tweaks to change yeah. the structure, where yeah. are those where where's the research taking place and with what operators as such to, to form that finding um uh, the, the well nowhere uh, this forum i suppose um these yeah, so, are these, these yeah, are just, so suggested just changes. Can, can i just um sorry I just, sorry can i just say i think we might be there's two different things here so there's the list and adding golf simulator to the list as an example which 
sounds like it requires some consultation for everyone who's using the list to know the golf simulator has been added and then to use golf simulator. That's one thing. There's the list being updated in general and the systems knowing it's updated. Andrew, to your point, it's automatic. Everyone's currently using it live. So any updates will go through. There's no need for any, any system intervention there. Um, that's the second thing. Um, so the first bit is Debbie's point. There will be work required if we add something like Golf Simulator. Everyone needs to know about that. The second thing is system point, which actually there's no work required. So that's that's OK to know, know about that. What Andrew's then saying is, you know, where's the consultation if there's big changes being made? Um, this particular thing we're talking about here is a mapping. It's nothing to do with the um, the kind of list that you're seeing in terms of the end user or anything like that. And the mapping value, as I mentioned before, the primary use case for that is the person who's using Legend knowing what they can choose as a cheat sheet from their list of uh, the activity list in order to correctly label the facility types. So that's just saying, I've got a list of 500 things. I want to call this a squash court. I know I need to choose squash from that list in order that it comes through as squash court. That's, yeah. that's all sorry, this is. I'm sorry, but it, I'm sorry Nick. I might, be, I might be jumping on this. You, you reference legend, but we need to keep this generic. It doesn't matter about the operator and the operating system, the software. Sorry, I understood. It's more because legend's the only one that hasn't got um, the capability to associate facility types directly. So everyone else is using this list as a, a list, as, as Stephen mentioned, um, and, as, as it, and it's in the Iverson as well. This list is being used as the list. Um, within the legend system, uniquely, the list isn't available, and they're using the uh, the activity list instead. And so that this is the mapping. And there might other be the other systems in future that have a similar problem. So you're absolutely it should be it's a generic, um, generically available mapping that can help other people as well. Um, and it's helpful to have that there. Um, but yeah. the the use case, if you like, for the mapping is quite is quite limited. Yeah, I think I'd point out that we did actually use this mapping when migrating from um, activities to activity types. Uh, sorry, facility types. Um, so this was actually very helpful for us when we moved over. So useful. So yes, yeah, so useful. Useful to have it there. But absolutely, the use, the, 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 the use case um, is more of an operational one for the operator just to label things as they want to label them rather than it's the, 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 the nuance of like whether we should include golf simulator which is a good discussion is, is kind of a different type of conversation i suppose because this is just a more of an operational get things mapped across so people can press the button type so, 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 I, I, so, so i think in terms of managing the list you know adding changing updating and stuff we 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 should be able to do a lot we should, we should be able to create a process fairly easily based on the work that we've done around the activity list and things we've agreed there. So I, I think that's something we can do. The management of the content of the list is at the top level is something we can we can improve fairly quickly, I think. Um, and Howard, maybe that's something we need to pick up with Chris when he's uh, feeling better. Um, and it's a logical extension of the, facility, uh, the activity list work that he's been doing, so that's, that's fine. I think the thing that's still bobbling around in my head is this this equivalence point. So, you know, I'm relatively new to this. I'm struggling to understand if what I'm struggling to understand is if we say a tennis court is a tennis court and we link it to the activity of tennis, does that prevent anyone then you having that tennis court bookable for badminton? And I think that comes to Stephen's point as well about not having um, fives courts, having squash courts. And my, I, my, my, yes, yeah, that doesn't, doesn't. I don't think that has, has it. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't have to affect them because you wouldn't. You just wouldn't use the mapping. Is that right? Yeah. You would, oh, well, you would. You, Legend would choose badminton court if they wanted to use. If they wanted to label something for, as a badminton court. They would yeah. label it as a badminton court. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't. It's doesn't. It's no, it's no prescription as to how the list is used. It's yeah. just a, a list that can be used. So I think uh, 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 what I'm trying to get at with this list, and I think I think you're right about the, the fives and the 
the racquetball. So I'll, I'll make those changes. But the the one example I think is that makes things really clear is um, if you tag something with dance, if you tag a facility with the activity dance, it and then use this mapping, um, that would mean that the thing the thing that you tagged with dance is a drama studio, and that is not correct because it could be a drama studio it could be a multi-use space it could be a dance studio it could be lots of other things um so what i've done is in the, the drama studio uh, facility type i've removed the activity of dance so that if you tag something with dance it's not saying that this is a drama studio and that's the nature of the mapping that i'm trying to well i'm suggesting that we sort of nail down is that if you if there is an activity that is tagged onto a facility type, if someone were to tag something with that activity, then it is correct to say that that thing is that facility type. So if you tag it with dance, you're saying that it is a drama studio, for example, is what you could take from the mapping as it is. And I would say that that is incorrect. Does that make a bit more sense? I'm sorry, I, I haven't presented this in the best possible way. <laughs> no, that, that does make more sense, Sid, thank you. Um, does that reassure other people? Yeah, I, guys, I, I'm, I'm okay with this. I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me if you add more facility types to the list. You know, it's a generic list, isn't it, Nick, if I remember rightly? So therefore, what Open Play presenting to me is the agreed list as per the standard, which I'm assuming. Um, so therefore, I, I just, and in fact, I just went back and just double checked while we we're on the call when we we're discussing it about table tennis table. I use that as an example. I want to see where we've actually located it to. And we, and because we couldn't decide where to put it, we put it in the multi multi purpose sports area, I think, uh, which they don't exist either. But because you can put a table tennis anywhere, we decided that's probably the best label. But then I noticed actually you have got a facility type called table tennis table, which actually isn't a facility type anyway. It's just a piece of apparatus, isn't it? So that's that's the exception to your facility type rule because i couldn't see any of the facility types that weren't pieces of apparatus they're all spaces mm. oh that's a, a table uh, tennis one's really interesting i was at a, yeah a, a yeah sport so. i was at a sport england thing on monday and talked to someone from table tennis england and they very much view tennis tables as facilities in their own right and then they can put those facilities anywhere in any in any geography in any location um the other example was um kit bags that, that are available from cafes to borrow in parks that, that was i also started wondering how we'd model that <laughs> yeah well that, that's interesting but that doesn't quite work from a configuration perspective though that approach i think <laughs> from the table tennis people but nevertheless i think you, you get the point i'm making so yeah. listen, i haven't got a problem if you want to add more more facility types then go ahead and do them does that mean that Stephen, you would in, in, now you've seen table tennis actually if you configured table tennis instead of not use games that would work for your configuration Right? Yeah, yeah, because we, we don't use this for programming. Don't don't forget, this is only purely for open active. Yeah, great. Oh, great. Oh, good. So yeah, but, table but what, tennis what we do, tables. Yeah, but what, <laughs> what we don't want to do is confuse the customer. That's the whole thing. So if, we, if we, we're giving it a label of of multi-purpose area and that doesn't exist in a, in our laser centers because not all of them have got multi-purpose areas, then that could cause a little bit of confusion. But now I can I can flag it. I can link it to facility type table tennis table. That kind of makes a bit more sense because that can be put anywhere. That is great news. And just to kind of round off on the, the different um, points, um, racquetball, I just had a quick check on Google. Very um, um, useful source for these kind of things, although obviously people on the call know a lot more. Uh, racquetball courts are 40, meet, 40 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 20 feet high. Official squash courts are 32 feet long, 21 feet wide, and 18 feet high. So it sounds like a racquetball court is a distinct thing from a squash court. It's just that in this case, squash courts are being used to play racquetball. Have I understood that rightly? Yeah, yeah, I think you have. I, I don't know anywhere in the UK that's got dedicated racquetball courts. I think it's an American thing, if I remember rightly. Um, so they probably have got dedicated racquetball courts in the States, but I haven't seen any in the UK in any of my travels. And, you know, we've got 250 ledger locations, haven't come across one. Yeah. So therefore, racquetball is played on a squash court. Well, this is it. So I, I guess I was thinking here, if, if the point of this equivalence is to give people like legends the ability to label racquetball as a racquetball court or a squash as a squash court, it sounds likely that if you're playing racquetball in this country, you're going to be booking a squash court. You're not going to expect yeah. to book a racquetball court because you know that there aren't any. 
<laughs> yeah, and De Debbie, looking... correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure Debbie will have the same experience, I'm almost certain. I'm going to assume you're right, Debbie, Debbie didn't say anything. Oh, sorry. Are you coming? sorry, I did say yes, but whether why it didn't come through the mic, I don't know. I'd Fair enough. Thanks, Debbie. Unmuted <laughs> yeah. and muted very quickly. Maybe I was too quick. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like in that case, maybe having the racket ball equivalence in there would be helpful because it allows people to um, reference racket ball. But as a, as a stereotype, if they want to, and in this in this country, in all cases we're aware of at least, it probably won't be used because they're all squash courts. Um, but we don't want to be calling them racquetball courts because they're not racquetball courts, I guess is the thing I was trying to get my head around. It sounds like we want to make sure they're labeled correctly as a squash court because they're only the they're only the ones that we have, rather than just they're, so, they're trying to say something like racquetball courts and squash courts are the same thing. So we just want to label anywhere you can play racquetball as a racquetball court. But that sounds not you see what I mean, that's probably not the right way around. Cool. That's great. I will um, undo the the change that I've proposed there. Um, the the other activity under <laughs> under squash court is maybe even more uh, confusing than the the racquetball example, which is fives. Um, there are five courts in the UK, but there are very yeah. few and far between. Um, and I think most people that want to play fives play it on a squash court. So what? What do we do there? Because um, five score is very unique because I think it was modeled in some Eton corridor or something ridiculous and has like a nook and a cranny in the court or something. So well, what do we do, want to do for that example where do it, if someone offers, if someone tags a facility as the activity fives, are we saying that that is, pro is probably a five score or is it probably a squash score? Or because it's unclear, should we not map it to any facility type whatsoever? So, so, so just in the interest of time, because there was another issue that we wanted to talk about today, I think we should come back to this in a future conversation. Uh, and perhaps people should have uh, a think about equivalence of facility types to activities. So, so it, it feels like we've kind of moved the conversation on some way, but perhaps not to a conclusion. Um, but I think perhaps if perhaps uh, the, the action here is that people go away and consider this and then we have a, 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 a 10 minutes on the next call where we actually make a decision around this. Um, so we, I think we all understand what the problem is and the challenge is now. Um, um, but, if, but I think to give people some time to think about it and then come back and make a decision next time. Is that all right? Uh, so if Siv puts it into the Slack channel, happy to comment on it separately. Yeah. Um, we'll do that, definitely. Um, so, uh, that was really interesting, thank you. Um, so the, the other issue that we wanted to talk about today, uh, which is similar, is around add-ons. So I think this is the principle that, um, I don't know, if you book a uh, AstroTurf tennis, uh, AstroTurf football pitch, um, that football pitch can also offer you for lighting. Or if you book a tennis court, there are tennis rackets available. Um, I guess the examples go on and on and on. Um, so I'll just open the issue up so people can see it. Um, this was proposed by Nathan, but I don't think he's on the call. So Howard, do you want to just give us a bit any okay. more info on that? Um, Are you there? I can, yeah, I oh, can sorry, provide some background if that's helpful. Oh, that'd be good. Sorry, you disappeared off the top of my Zoom. Uh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so essentially, um, this is something that we built into BookTech um, a while ago, uh, basically to support people that wanted to provide racket hire. Um, but we found as we've released this feature um, that it's used for a lot of different things. Um, so for sporting activities, it's normally equipment hire, but it can also be um, things that require setups. So um, for uh, what was the example? The for like cricket nets and stuff, um, like bringing cricket balls, even if there's no cost involved in that or any kind of other setup that's required. So, um, one use was for a more use gaming arena to put up some uh, uh, tennis nets, um, and just things like that to be able to 
specify in a little bit more detail kind of additional things to that are required as part of your booking um and another use case is uh like catering and stuff for um space hire uh so all of these use cases uh we call add-ons um and it's just a uh either an optional or a required addition to a booking that um has a, a cost or not a cost depending on what it is Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I guess other people's thoughts on this as an idea. Someone must have well, 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 <laughs> well, well, interesting. We, we, we don't offer that now through our existing open play solution. Flow doesn't allow us to do add ons currently. Would you like, would you like it? To? Yeah, like, likewise. Yeah. Well, th there's a lot of things we'd like it to do, actually, Andrew. Um, uh, it all depends on where, where it appears on the list. You know, we've all got lists as long as our arms. Deb will have an equivalent list for Andrew and uh, for Andy, and uh, we've got an equivalent list for Sam at Open Place. So, um, yeah, it, of course, it all makes sense. Every, everything, you know, all these things are uh, um, better facilities and features for our customers to uh, make their, their experience better. Um, you know, but but of course, ultimately, we've got to be able to fulfill that at the, the other end, you know, so we've got to make sure that a stock is available when they turn up if somebody's booked a squash court or and they want squash rackets, as an example, they want to buy squash balls, you know, we've got to make sure we've got them there. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's it's a good idea. Do I need it now? Probably not. It doesn't mean it shouldn't get done. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Andy, I think you were trying to come in on that as well. No, no, I was, I was literally just confirming the same as Stephen that, you know, that it probably is something that would everyone actually would love to have on the list, but it's not a current offering at the moment. Okay. Yeah, I think I would should mention a couple of things about this. First off, it is entirely optional. Um, so the way that we've structured it, um, it doesn't require you to supply add-on information. Um, and when you're booking, you don't actually have to supply add-ons if your um, broker doesn't support it. Um, the other thing that we've intentionally kind of semi excluded is um monitoring stock levels and just because that's probably a little bit too complicated and re would require another another feed in order to monitor that so we do have an error yeah. which basically says yeah. that there's not enough stock available at the time of booking um so during the c2 request um but apart from that we just kind of ignore stock levels entirely Um, any other thoughts? If we, um, it, it's not available to the open page solution at the moment, Andrew, um, okay. uh, and Nathan. So, but it, but if, if it was, and we decided to ignore it, then because it's optional, then what's the value? Well, I guess the, um, the value is it does allow you to capture this information in kind of like a nice standard way. So if you've got lots of booking platforms which do su support add-ons as a broker, then you don't have to worry about how they support add-ons, which is kind of entirely what the specification is for to reduce the amount of discussion required in these kind of, in these kind of things. Okay. I guess the danger with all of these things that you add in is that we're in this position where the clients are told it's possible and then they want it. So then we're backed into a corner of having to do something about it, even though it's not available on, even on our own booking systems. So if both myself and Stephen are saying, this is not really a priority for us at all, then why would you consider putting it in? Because then the pressure just loops around because whoever it is that, um, you know, converses with our clients and says it's possible, that just comes back around to us and we have to do it at some point. It's like having something as optional when it's not really optional because as soon as somebody sees it, they want it. 
yeah, so, I see what you mean, and I do appreciate the concern. So from a specifications point of view, this probably isn't something we'd build into the specification at the moment based on what I'm hearing, but it's an extension that we know exists in in the kind of play finder book tech world that if at some point we did find a requirement we could then bring into the specification is that how we would deal with that uh yeah i think so i think yeah. that makes a lot of sense okay cool for me the question is do we do we put it in as beta or do we put it in as a specific book tech extension so if it was beta then other people can experiment with it and that means that when they come to actually i i, I totally agree it shouldn't go straight into the spec because we've got yeah. anywhere near enough implementation experience for that to be the case yeah and it sounds like there's not going to be that for a while given what even and debbie have said um but it might be that other booking systems will be implementing this in future you know if they're interested so it might be benefit to put it in beta and um allow that experimentation which also uh, deals with debbie's point because it's in beta it won't be something that is going to be asked for as core part of the spec in the way that other things could be uh, to be fair, even if it's an extension, it could still be asked for by a client. So nothing protects us from that. However, it's documented. Um, even if it's not an extension, it could be proposed as a client. There's something that could be added as an extension. You know, so you can't get away from that entirely. But maybe, maybe beta might be uh, might be preferable as a thing. Something to think. I think that makes sense because we don't we don't want to be in a situation where the spec doesn't allow you to add extra features in. Um, and therefore potentially harm adoption if you wanted to add in features that aren't supported in the spec. Okay, that, that's interesting. Thank you. So, you know, I'm, I'm new. How would we make a decision here as a as a committee? Well, how how do we decide, Howard? It's a fairly low bar for beta field. Uh, sure. in terms of getting getting one added in. Oh, there you go, Howard. I, sorry, <clears throat> yeah, I think, well, this, the kind of principles, mindful of the burden on, on the people at the sharp end, obviously. Um, but we want to create the opportunity for standardization and Nathan's, you know, provide an opportunity. If that's hidden away to some extent as an extension for one operator, then the, the risk is someone else will go and do something different and, and yeah. move away from that standardization. So it feels like the beta is the, is the correct approach. Um, and, uh, you know, and that that's, I think, my view. But No, I would, I would agree that sounds sensible. So is there anyone who would completely object to us making this a beta? I think that would probably come down to myself because I'm the one Proposing it. Yeah. And I guess you don't object because you've raised it. No, exactly. And we're yeah. building it in as our part of our integration between BookTech and PlayFinder at the moment. Cool. Um, okay. So we'll have the most implementation experience going forward. Excellent. That sounds good. That that was I was expecting that one to be a harder discussion than the first one, but somehow it was easier. So yeah, it's interesting. I'll get a feel for this group as we go along. Um, so the last thing we wanted to do was look at kind of future topics and have a go at prioritizing some of those. Oh, sorry, just to, sorry. Quickly, Andrew, yeah. just to just to get clarify next actions on that. Um uh, as a beta field, it, it was all needs to be documented in issues in the relevant specification repositories, which uh it has been. And anything from that. Um, the next action would be creating a pull request in the NS beta repository with the relevant additions to the namespace referencing this issue. Um, and then if that, that is then approved, then we'll process there. Um, and therefore the validator would recognize the fields as uh, when that gets approved, at which point it's, it's in beta. That also ends up going into the impact of documentation as beta fields with all the caveats around it. Um, that's all driven from the, that repository. So. That next, that would be the next action, and then, then there's no further work because the beta fields are self-documenting. The documentation links back to this issue, so anyone implementing would then look at this issue, read to the bottom, and make some brilliant appendices and whole explanation in that issue is what they would read to understand what to do, and comment as well if they are interested in. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Nick, for the helpful. clarification. That's helpful. Um, excellent. So yeah, we wanted to talk about some things that some things that were on our kind of to-do list um, and to try and prioritise them a little bit. Um, Howard's barely got any voice left. So um, 
I, th I think these are things that Howard has drawn out of past discussions and kind of issue lists on GitHub and stuff like that. Is there anything? Uh, and, and I think the question is, you know, where should we be focusing? What order should we be dealing with these in? Is there anything you'd add, Howard? No, just that we're in that that position of we're mindful of any any kind of um, enhancements, things we're trying to drive forward, good things, good ideas, bright ideas, whatever innovations. Um, ultimately, there's a the, in time there might be a knock-on effect in terms of burden on the operators or the systems, um, but we can't not talk about these things you know this the, these kind of um, positive steps forward things like the accessibility and how we present that information so i think that's just introducing the um my thoughts on this the list came from conversations we had from this group and uh, i think the topic of safeguarding came down from the steering committee uh, and some of the ones in italics we've already uh, started to we have covered you know, in some discussions um I'll have to stop there. Okay, so um, as we've only got three minutes left, um, I think what I will propose that we do is at, at a forthcoming meeting, we actually have a proper road mapping session where we can uh, go through some of these areas in a little bit of detail and then do some sort of group prioritization exercise uh, together to, to prioritize these things, to add things to the list that we want to add. So I, I think for now, if we flag that there are things that we want to prioritize and the, the next uh, probably at the next meeting we will do we'll have a bit of a workshop session and we will do that prioritization um I, I think that's enough and i think what that enables people members of the committee to do is to go away and to think about uh what things they would want prioritizing so you know we've got this list but is there, is there stuff that isn't on this list that, that could be a candidate um So uh, yeah, we, we will have a, a prioritization session next time uh, we, we we get together. Um, we've got two minutes left. Is there anything else anyone wants to raise today? Great, thank you. I think you've all been quite kind to me for my first W3C call, so thank you for that. I've enjoyed the discussion. It was really interesting. Um, and uh, we'll see you at the next call. Thank you for your time today.